Roberto aquí en Auto 060 y ahora vamos a, we're going to switch again back to English because we now have uh, Jessica Anderson for uh, Kiplinger.com uh, to talk about uh, a topic that comes up a lot when people are deciding to either buy or get, well, well getting a new car, which is, uh, should I buy or should I lease? How are you, Jessica? I'm good. How are you? How are you doing? Excellent. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time to talk to us. And uh, seriously, this is a question that comes up uh, all the time. I mean, people who know what I do or journalists who, who cover the auto industry, and uh, at least I'm sure it comes up to you uh, among all your friends and, and family and all that. Should I buy or should I lease, right? It's a, it's a, it's a very, very uh, touchy point because it's, it's about money at the end of the road. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people are always saying, well, you know, is it better to buy because then, then I end up with something or, you know, is it better to lease so I'm not spending money on something that maybe I, you know, won't use for the, you know, full five years or something. So it's definitely a touchy subject. Yeah, exactly. So you are at uh, Kiplinger.page.com and you came up with five uh, answers that are going to try to give uh, some clear clarity to this. So. It's a bad deal. That's the, the first thing. Uh, the first question is: It leasing a bad deal? No, it's not. So the story that we did was, you know, five myths. So things that you know, some people might assume if you're if you're coming from a background of you know a family that always bought their cars, you might say, oh, well, leasing is just a bad deal. You don't get anything at the end of it. But in general, if you keep a car well past the day that the loan is paid off or you pay cash, you're going to save money by buying. But If you, you know, are somebody that likes to be in a new car fairly often, you might, you know, you might trade in your car before the loan is paid off, um, your trade-in value might not always cover the re remaining balance of the loan. So you're actually going to come out way ahead by leasing. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, and, and leasing, I guess the attractive thing for some people is that you get uh, less payments, uh, monthly payments, right? But, but again, that's... Right, the, right that you were saying that you don't get anything at the end, but, like, if you do the math, it's actually more beneficial. Mm -hmm. It is because the payments are lower because you're only using for the portion of the car that you're using, not the entire cost of the car. So you're paying, you know, for the drop in um, resale value, basically, over the three-year period instead of paying for the entire car up front. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, a friend of mine was uh, talking about this uh, just last week, And she's, she was thinking about getting an old car, uh, and then she thought about, what about leasing? I mean, there are leases that are really not very expensive. And she was thinking, so should I get a, an old car and pay it cash, and then I'm going to be putting like $200 every month to fix something. So <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. Yeah, and that's another one of the perks is that you've got this peace of mind kind of built in with leasing that the repairs are covered. It's a brand new car, so... Anything that goes wrong with it is going to be under warranty, and a lot of the automakers are now offering maintenance programs as well, so they're actually going to be covering, you know, your you know, oil changes and stuff like that. Um, so it's very, very low cost. Yeah, and uh, the other thing on your list is, like, it's uh, nearly impossible to negotiate a good uh, deal in a lease. Yeah, and, you know, I think that that's kind of um, something that people think often also because you see these deals on TV and they're like, oh, you know, get, you know, a new Nissan Altima for, our, you know, $179 and, uh, you know, you go in and you pick out the Altima that you want and then they're like, oh, well, that's $300. Yeah. And, you know, because you haven't, you know, that's just offered on one specific model. Well, if you, you know, argue, um, you know, and negotiate with the dealer just as you would on a new car, you're going to be able to get a much better monthly price for your lease. You just have to kind of know the, the, the lingo to go in with. You know, for example, the capitalized cost is the price of the car. So yeah. just like you wouldn't pay a sticker price if you were buying it, you don't want to pay a sticker price if you're leasing it, too. So you should negotiate that just the same as if you were buying. And the key here for for our audience and your readership also at KeepOnGuards.com is, like, to do the homework, right? Be, go go inform into the dealership. Don't, just don't go, like, like, a blind person showing up, like, I want that car and uh, give me what you, you have, right? So they have to... Right, uh, yeah. If you, if the, you don't do your homework, they're going to, um, you know, they're going to get a really good deal out of you, uh, and you're <laughs> not going to get a very good deal out of them. So that's the great thing about these uh, kind of uh, articles that, that you write on KeepOnGuards.com. Uh, so the other thing is uh, about the tax break. A lot of people think that it only works for your business. 
Right. Well, and individuals get a tax break break also. In most states, you only pay sales tax on the monthly payments, not the entire vehicle price. There are a couple of states like Arkansas, Illinois, Maryland, Oklahoma, Texas, and Virginia, which actually do charge the sales tax on the entire price of the car. But in general, you're going to be getting, you know, a a good deal because you're not going to be paying for, you know, taxes on a $25,000 car, say, you're just going to be paying for, you know, perhaps the $15,000 worth of your payments. Yeah. Uh, one more thing is when you turn in the car again, and like uh, wear and tear, what's normal wear and tear, and miles and all that that aren't put into the contract. Uh, so that's another thing that people are afraid of when they do a lease, right? Like it, when, what's going to happen when I return the car? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my advice to people is always just, you know, if you treat the car the way that you would treat a car that you purchased, you know, take good care of it, <clears throat> you're not going to be having, you know, to pay hefty fees on the back end. Um, you know, to, before you enter into a lease, do, you know, kind of a rough calculation on how many miles, you know, you typically drive, you know, say in a month, and then, you know, multiply that, that by 12 and kind of figure out how much you typically drive per year. If you think that the, you know, say maybe 12,000 miles that are built into the lease isn't going to be enough for you, you can talk to the dealer and kind of negotiate perhaps a, a higher payment, but that way, you know, you'll be paying up front for more miles rather than paying the, you know, 25 cent per mile fee on the back end. Yeah, and get surprised, right, at the end. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then to tell that the final one, we, we have a couple minutes here left. Um, if you want to get out early of a lease, uh, it's, some people believe it's almost impossible. You know, and, and that is one of the biggest myths out there is just that there are plenty of ways to get out of a lease. Um, you know, obviously you want to really think through, um, your needs before you enter into something like that because there will be an early exit fee if you have to turn in a lease early and sometimes, you know, it's just the remainder of all your payments. But there are now um, several fee-based websites, including leasetrader.com and swapalease.com, which uh, both match people who want to get out of their lease early with people that want to assume a short-term lease. So say I've got, you know, a three-series BMW and I'm two years into the lease and I'm like, I just, I can't handle the yeah. payments. I just lost my job. I got to get rid of it. Well, there's not really somebody out there looking, you know, to maybe test out that BMW 3 Series and maybe they're just not sure if they want to buy it, if they want to lease it, or if that's really the car for them. But if they can get into it for a year, what's left on my lease, that's going to, you know, give them an opportunity to, you know, really, really get a good idea if it's the car for them. Excellent. Jessica Anderson from uh, Kiplinger.com. And that's, that's the website where people can follow you and, like, see what you're, you're informing us about, right? Yep, that's right. And uh, the other thing, as we were saying, like, do your homework before. I mean, read the contract, <laughs> right? I mean, the, the fine print is there for a reason, so you don't want to be surprised with that exactly. either. I, I, I always yeah, say, read the contract. Yeah, the, 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 the biggest lie in, a, in every contract is I read and understood everything in this contract. Most people don't. <laughs> <laughs> And that's true. No, they don't. And then you just sign and, and then exactly. you're done. <laughs> so read it and understand it, please. Uh, Jessica Anderson, thank you very much from KeepingGear.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pues ahí tienen esta información sobre los cinco mitos sobre eh, hacer un lease o comprar un auto con Jessica Anderson de KeepingGear.com. Y como siempre, vamos a poner toda la información de la que hablamos, todos los temas que tocamos aquí en el show de hoy. Vamos a poner nuestra página de Facebook, facebook.com slash auto 060. También los invito, como siempre, a que visiten el canal de YouTube, eh, auto 060 en YouTube. A mí me pueden seguir personalmente en eh, Twitter, arroba Javier Mota. Y los espero en la próxima edición de Auto 060 aquí en Cristina Radio Network. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.